Hello, Andy. Hi, Miss Polly. <laughs> Hi, Sylvie. Hello, Miss Polly. <laughs> Hello, students. This week we have got a crazy instrument making project for you. We're very excited about this. I asked Andy to go and make something that was going to work as a one string bass because in Africa there's lots of one stringed instruments and we managed to make one that everyone can make at home. So before we get into showing you how to make it, we're going to have a little demonstration of how it sounds and we're going to, so we're going to play a very well known song. You can count on me, I want to This could be made at home. Yeah, well, what made me think of it was that a friend made this for me years ago. It's called a diddly bow, which is just a one string guitar sort of thing. And uh, the guitar string goes through the end of this tin and the tin acts like a resonator. And the stick of pine is uh, for, for um, getting the different notes. So in this case, you hit it with a stick. up and down. So um, that's often used for blues music um, in African American and African situations. So anyway I thought well, what could we do? So um, metal strings are a bit tricky to get hold of unless you've got a, some old guitar strings. So, But nylon is good and the best, the easiest nylon to get, use is whippersnipper cord which comes in a roll like that from the hardware um, for trimming grass and so on, but before you use it for that, you can use it to make music. So we've got some tension on it, and the tension is achieved by going over the end of the table into a bucket, and in the bucket are weights, like bricks or um, those metal dumbbells you can use for exercise. And we've just put enough in to make it, give it a good sound like that. And it goes all the way on the other side as well. Yeah, there's a bucket on each end to give the same weight. Otherwise, it would just try to slide off the table. Uh, of course, you, your parents might not want you to put screws into the table. So that's <laughs> why we use the buckets and weights instead. So then, um, if you don't have a resonator, if you just have it like that, it's pretty quiet. So if you put something like um, a cream bottle underneath, it acts like a bridge and also a small resonator. That's quite good. You could try a cardboard box, which has um, got some resonance to it. That's a bit quiet. Maybe put a bridge under there to give it a bit more oomph. Funky, buzzy kind of sound. But the best one that I found in a, in a quick experiment was a one litre milk container. Uh, you have to drink the milk first. It's a good size, it gives you a nice resonance coming out the end. Um, and then it's easy to tune. If you want a low note, you move it away. You can get quite a low note, like a double bass. So oh, I like that. For this tune, we tuned it to the ukulele chords, and when I got the right note for the ukulele, I put a bit of a mark on the paper here, so I'd get it in the same place. And then I went along and I checked with my ear, you could do it with a tuner, to find the next note in the scale, so do, re, and then I put a mark there. There, put a mark with the texture and so on. Re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, and do again. And that's about all the notes you need for a simple bass. <laughs> awesome. And 
would you like to play is that very famous bass riff? The first riff that anyone learns on a rock and roll guitar or the bass. <laughs> Again! <laughs> Who would have thought? A bit of whippersnipper line, a milk bottle, some buckets. Here you go, before dinner, a bit of bass. After dinner, a bit of bass. Hope you have lots of fun doing that. I can't wait to hear your stories of turning your kitchen table into a double bass. Um, have fun, let me know. Bye everyone. Again. <laughs>